Hello everybody and welcome to uh, Module 2. Hopefully everyone had a good Module 1. Uh, so this week uh, we're going to talk about networking, we're going to talk about the application layer protocols, we're going to talk about the data transfer protocols, the authentication, network service, network management, audiovisual, and database protocols. So uh, my, so my uh, license didn't work for my, uh, I got a new computer, so I was not able to set everything up for Outlook yet. So um, this week we'll be doing this a little bit different by me just uh, putting this in Google Docs and talking about it this way. So these are the uh, layers that we're gonna be talking about this week for week two. Um, and so these kind of fall along the OSI model that we talked about last week. Um, so for example, let me paste this in here. So these are the OSI models that we talked about last week. I'm gonna zoom this in because I'm not sure how that looks like. No, we want remote desktop there. All right. All right, so OSI models, application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport network, data link, and physical layer. So um, that's our uh, OSI models that we talked about last week. And so just remember at the application layer, layer which is number seven, um, that's when we call uh, these specific names such as HTTP, HTTPS. So for example, if we would call a website you know, if we'd go to, you know, we have this open here. All right, so this is what you're going to get for the first time. Um, this is where you would sign in at. Um, I will sign in in a minute. Wow. If you don't have an account. <laughs> where is that coming from? Okay. I have no idea where that came from. I must have had another video going. Anyways. Um, so if you would go to my website, which is https uh, www.jeffreyjseaman, yeah, it would pop up, which is using a HTTPS account. And I don't know if you, yeah, so you can see that right there. So that HTTPS uses a port number 43. Now, if I would go to, and let's go to, and I think I have this turned off. Yeah, so I have this turned off. It, it redirects here. But the jcman.it.pointpark.edu is using a non-secure port. Turn that off because I'm not using that. So if you go to a website that has HTTP, it's using a non-secure port. And that port number is using a different port number. Um, so, anyways, just wanted to throw that out there. So, what we want to uh, talk about this week is we want to talk about the application layer, so that's HTTPS, and then we want to talk about the transport layer, which is number four, and that's dealing with um, uh, port 80. So, HTTP would be port 80. What that means is, uh, 80 port means it's an unsecure port. So if you, if we pull up a website on here, so look, for example, let me uh, pull up um, Visual Studio Code. Maybe I have something up here that I could use as an example. Perhaps I don't have anything I could use as an example. Let's see. That is, well, you know what? We This is a student's account that he was working on. So. Let's take this right here and use um, local server. And so if you see this right here, um, it is using HTTP. So it's using a local host, which is using the port 80. Even though it says 5501, 5501 is the port associated with the site itself that is configured. But as far as the, the website address is actually on port 80. So that's how that HTTP works. So um, you have HTTPS and SSL. So let me uh, paste another photo over here. So you have HTTPS, which reports to port 443. That's called the SSL, which is the secure socket layer. And then there's something called TLS. And so the TLS is the transport layer um, section, or trans uh, 
transport layer security just like if we uh, let's go up here we have the transport layer number four so that's what TLS is and this changed probably 1999 2000 time frame uh, they start referring to a TLS versus SSL all right so moving on here we're gonna talk about file transfer a little bit so this week will be a lecture and a demo. So demo demo we'll talk about file transfer, how to utilize that and so forth. And that'll be actually part of your homework assignment. So file transfer is it's basically what it means. It is a uh, it's some type of way to transfer files from point A to point B. In this case we have a client. So let's say that you know I built this website, I have a hosting provider where my uh, website is um, located being hosted whatever the case is um, I could file into it which is called FTP file transfer protocol and it allows me to be able to transfer my files from for my client being my computer um, or my desktop to the server itself okay so there are three different um, FTP types that you can use as you can imagine they all have different ports associated with them so you have FTP, which is File Transfer Protocol, as we mentioned. That is using port 20 and 21. Um, you have Secure um, File Transfer Protocol. That's using port 22. And then you have a different one, which is called TFT, which is not used that often, to be honest with you. And it is um, uh, transfer uh, File proto Transfer Protocol. And it is for like small files, uh, transfers OS files from say your workstation, your desktop, uh, your client to a device, uh, server, switch, etc. So let's replace this right here with that. And it has the port numbers. And that one actually uses port number 69. So interesting with TFTP, um, it is kind of associated with SMB. So small mark billy uh, server manage server message block is what it stands for so like large businesses like network drive so if you work at uh, the bmy mailings the pnc banks whatever um, they typically have a network drive that usually uses smb and so like if you need to mount a drive so for example like uh, a lot of jobs i had early on they ha would have like a, a location, you'd mount a drive, it'd be like your secure location. For example, uh, here at the college, everyone should have a network drive. So if you've not noticed it, when you log on to one of the uh, uh, computers in the lab, or if you log into a computer in the uh, computer room, log in the next time, well, you guys are remote, so it doesn't, well, you know, you, you'll, you'll see what I mean because we're uh, in our lab, but um, there'll be a drive that's mounted for you. And it's just like your, your personal account information um, so that is that uses the TFTP protocol which is 69 uses that port there itself um, so we'll have a lab that walks through how to do this um, but we'll save that for after this video all right so we'll move it on let's talk about email a little bit okay so let's move on here um, so email is uses different protocols too and this, this whole email thing has changed so much and I, I don't know the age of everyone in this class but when I came out when like probably I mean I grew up in this whole thing before the you know internet actually became something so you know coming out of high school in 1995 at that time you heard about the internet but it still wasn't available to the location that I resided in and it was wasn't until like the summer I remember June of 95 I found out that our location was going to be able to have internet which was dial up and so at this time when you wanted email you wanted to check email you didn't have the google the gmails.com the yahoos the hotmail the outlook.com none of that existed so you had to manually set up um these accounts okay so you had different um different protocols so you had uh something called pop3 and so pop3 stood for post office i know protocol so how, how awesome so post office protocol was pop3 which was normal and i'll talk about that in a second here you had something called imap this one was internet 
uh, message access protocol. And then lastly, you had SMTP. And we'll talk about that one as well. I was using simple mail transfer protocol. And they're all used on different ports. So POP3 was if you wanted to set up your inbox, um, that's how you set up your inbox email. IMAP, Internet Message Access Protocol. Typically, you wouldn't have that unless you worked in an office. And then lastly, um, SMTP, that was for outgoing email. So you had to have different ports for that. So the unsecured methodology for POP3 was 110. IMAP was using 143 and SMTP was using 25. Now, they give you different pot ones that you can use. So I'm actually gonna paste that one in here for you as well, let you see it. So go down here. So you could use 110 for unsecured, 995. Um, for secured, INAP, IMAP is 993. Now, SMTP is a little bit different. You can use 25 and 465, but you could also use port 26, which is also a secure port, if your, um, wherever your computer is at, your, your server room, if they have 26 uh, set up for that. So that's a pretty cool thing that you can use. Now, like I said, Back in 90, like my first job, my first technical job was working for a company called Charter Communications uh, in 1999, owned by Paul Allen. And one of my primary jobs was doing inter well, internet technical support. So customers would call in and say, hey, I just got my internet and I need to set up my email. I would have to use either, at, at that time, they had something called Outlook Express or they had um, Microsoft Outlook. Outlook. And um, surprisingly enough, apparently I was teaching back then as well. I um, created videos online somehow, um, and they're out there somewhere. And uh, anyways, uh, you would go have to go in and manually configure um, setting up that server. Um, that's in port number your 110s and, and, and 25, and that's pretty much what everyone was using. Boom, they got emails, and um, so that was a fun time. A different time now things are so different because now you go to gmail.com and it automatically configures it for you but you know if you're setting up like a website um, and you're like hey I'm gonna have email sent out blah 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 then that's when you actually have to do this stuff and, and find out the port numbers and and put it in your code and it's, it's a lot different now all right so anyways um, let's talk a little bit about authentication and, and I know that this is this is online so if you guys have questions reach out, send me a message on Element, whatever. Um, authentication. So um, let's talk about authentication. So there's um, think, when we think about authentication, there's different um, uh, d different ways that you authenticate. This process has changed a lot over years as well. Um, LDAP is one way, which stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. And then there's, um, so that's LDAP right there. And then there's also, imagine there's something else called LDAPs. And, oops. And so you can imagine what that is. So it's, uh, I'll put that one here. So that's uh, lightweight, same thing. Um, directory, access, protocol, secure. Uh, it's a good thing this is not an English class. All right. So that's what that stands for. Now, LDAP uses port 389, and LDAPs, plural, uses 636. Um, so how it works is, for example, if we, you know, you log on to, and this is like if you work for a company or, and this has changed so much still. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, I go to work in the year 2001, 2002. This time, everyone's using desktop. We're using Windows. I log on. It has a username. I input my username. It has a password. I input my password. And what happens is um, it s sends a communication to the server and says, Hey, Jay Seaman, password, blah, 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 um, wants to access the server. And then what the server does is it gets this token and says, oh, guess what? I got a, I got a token because I found Jay Seaman. He's been authenticated. And boom, sends it back to the client. And then boom, I have access to, to the server or, or, or to the computer. So things have changed so much since then. Um, so it's, it's just it's so different than what it used to be. 
Um, I, I think it's easier now than it was then because then, and why I say it's different, like, okay, so you go to the school right now, you log on, you click a thing, you enter your password, that's it. Nothing else. You don't have to do anything. It automatically configures your domain and everything. Back in that time, you had to do your username, password, then you, there was a drop down um, box and you had to check what network that you were connecting to. That confused the heck out of a lot of people. They made it a lot easier with different uh, Windows uh, operating systems. All right, so let's talk a little bit about network services, okay? Um, DHCP, has anyone ever heard DHCP? Well, you can't answer me, but what it stands for is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So, what is DHCP? And we'll actually talk about this in a demo as well. So DHCP is a, a workstation, an IP address into the network. Um, so the IP address is an identifier, which I think we all know what an IP address is at this point, for your address on the network. So any device like your computer, your um, watch, your, uh, your if you have an iWatch, if you have a, a mobile phone, I think we all have mobile phones at this day, age, but any type of device, smartphone, dishwasher, anything, those all have an IP address assigned to it. Um, so anytime that you start a device like your uh, smart TV boots up or your um, Amazon Alexa, oh, she heard me, or your Hey Google, whatever device it is, um, starts up and automatically uses DACP and says, hey, I need an IP address for this and it, and it gets an IP address. So how does that work? So let's say, for example, um, so your friend comes over. You know, your friend's like, hey, I want to connect to, I got my phone here and my L LTE 5G or whatever is not working. And I, I want to connect to the network. What's your uh, password? You give, give him your password. And so what happens is um, his client, being his phone, automatically um, sends out a discover message and says, hey, um, I have this new device and I need to see if I can get an IP address signed. So that's when it looks and says, okay, is there any addresses available for this new device? So DACP then is going to reply with something called, called an offer. So it's making an offer. It says, hey, I, I got an offer for you. And so the device itself um, will um, receive some information such as IP address, the subnet uh, mask, the default gateway, uh, the DNS server, and maybe some other information as well. Um, so the offer message is going to have the IP address, um, as I mentioned, all that detailed information, which is makes it very helpful because it allows the uh, device to be able to authenticate if necessary. Um, so let's see. Okay, so moving on from that, um, it will also um, provide uh, port numbers, um, in this case, DHCP is using an unsecure at 67, and then secure port is using uh, 68. But that'll all be um, done automatically, okay? And so what we'll do in our in our lab, we'll actually walk through the DHCP thing, how that works as well. All right, um, let's see here. We're moving on to domain name system, DNS. Very important. So hopefully you've heard of DNS before. And we'll also talk about that as well. But, you know, so how's DNS work? So DNS allows us to take websites like pointpark.edu, google.com, facebook.com, um, timu.com, amazon.com, etc. And what happens is the DNS server will reply back with the IP address. Like, for example, you're like, hey, I want to go to facebook.com. Boom. The DNS will say, hey, um, server replies back and gives an IP address and says, hey, IP, send me the website that you have available. And it sends it back to the worst station. Because imagine if you had to go around and say, okay, I need to go to that site that you do social media. They call it Facebook. So now I have to enter that uh, IP address. And so, for example, if I, I think it'll allow me to do it on Mac. So if I come into terminal do this pull it over here and I say ping we'll use facebook.com give me an IP address alright so 
you look at that. So the IP address is 31, 13, 71, 36. Hey, I need to go to that third. Oh, geez, that's going to keep going. I need to go to 31.13.71.36. Now, you're going to have to bookmark all this because that's going to be, well, maybe it'll be possible, but to me, that would be awful to remember all those numbers. Um, where it's easier just to remember a, a, a name or something like that. So that is how DNS works. It provides that information for us. It resolves the name versus remembering an IP address. So the IP address changes, will change sometimes depending, like if for, uh, for like um, how the DNS works is there's a domain name server um, provided, which is the name of which is a server IP address of the server itself. Now that in that most cases will be static, but if you're running something locally at your house, so, so you have your own server connector and doing X, Y, and Z, um, typically you'll have a IP address that changes um, uh, through your local provider, unless you purchase a dedicated IP address. So that would be a static IP that never changes and prevents that. So if you're doing like some type of game system for Xbox or whatever, um, and we'll talk about DNS in our lab as well. Um, another thing I want to talk a little bit about, and I don't really spend much time on, is this right here called uh, Network Time Protocol. This basically is um, a way to uh, manage precise time, like universal time around the world. Um, and it manages it so that, you know, different servers are in different locations. Think about your cloud-based servers uh, dealing with uh, AWS, um, Azure, etc. This is definitely uh, needed. Uh, so network management, uh, Telnet, uh, I'm sorry, network management um, uses, it's a NTP, which is network time protocol, and it's coordinated for universal time. So let's talk a little bit about network management. I know we're kind of all over the place. So we're just kind of hitting all the topics today. Uh, network management is something like this. So you have something called Telnet and SSH. Now Telnet goes back to um, the email as well, which is interesting because it, um, at that time uh, you can only, because you know email is so new, um, we were learning it and the thing is, there was a limitation on how much space that you can hold, what you can hand, uh, send. And it, it varied from different places. But the internet company I work for, um, we set a limit of two megabytes per email. So what would happen is customer call and say, you know, um, my aunt or my cousin sent me a photo. I can't receive it. Or, or they'll say, hey, I'm trying to get my email. It's just stuck. It's hung. It's not doing anything. So what we would do is we would set a thre threshold of any file over two megs would be stuck. So what we would do is we use the Telenet uh, um, protocol and we would go into like that screen that I did right there. So we would go into uh, a terminal screen. I don't know if I still have it up there. I do. Um, so we'd come in here and tell that into an IP address like that. And what would happen is it would allow us to connect to that. We'd authenticate against it. And then we go in and we'd be able to look up that person's email account and allow us to, what we typically would do is go in and delete that big file. And then boom, we'd have them try it from their end and they would be able to access their email. Uh, and that's kind of how SSH works as well. So Telnet used port 23. Um, um, SSH uses port 22 so what's interesting is there'll be something that we'll do in a demo I'll show you something called putty which is um, basically telling that using SSH and it's a way that you connect into a server that we have here that we'll also set up for you I'll set up for you as well so um, let's see here uh, So yeah, that is SSH and Telnet, and we'll talk about that in our lab. All right, what else do we have here? Um, all right, so lastly, I think it's the last thing I, yeah, this is pretty much one of the last things I wanna talk about is SNMP. Um, so what is SNMP? It's a simple network management protocol. Um, SNMP server is for port events on devices to tell other, so let me actually show you what it is for. So SNMP would be if we had a, a logo, something that looked like this. So you have this centralized server here and you have 
client server over here like you have your web server maybe email server maybe the firewall and some other device server we'll just say the exchange server which is where all the emails are all held at so this SNPP which is simple network management protocol this is a um, uses a port uh, vet on devices it tells us about messages that are being sent back and forth so what that means is anytime something's happening something's happened with the server um, we'll have messages as we can easily reach out and say hey I want you to I'm sending you a message I want you to tell me what's happening with your system okay this is what's happening boom um, okay I, it's like um, if you if you've ever queried a statement you do select all from table and you get all information that's what's happening here it allows the SNMP server to be able to po populate maybe a table with all the information that it found so if it wanted to create like a think of an excel sheet it says okay this server here's the um here's the status of it here's this server and so forth um so and so it sends out all a message to all devices and says hey tell me all about your devices and they call it walk the tree so it sends it back to the server the server then can populate a table like i said and what's happening on the devices um, it also could have a, a, a situation where, okay, um, the exchange server says, you know what, we have a problem here, something's happening. Okay, it could automatically send it back to the SNP server and, and it uh, piggybacks to, um, which is a central server, and says, hey, we have a problem. Then it could populate and say, hey, there's an issue going on here. All right, what else? All right, so now there's a syslog, which kind of correlates within this as well. So think of the syslog as a system record of events that happen. So that goes back to SNP server and it says, hey, you know what, we have this syslog. The system log will identify and log all this information. So if you've ever gone on your computer, on your Windows computer, look at the logs, you could see, I have a Mac, so I can't show you what it looks like on Windows, and you can see any type of logs that happen. So it gives you a paper trail of anything that happened um, then maybe a problem happened when your computer loaded or whatever the case is. All right, what else? Uh, okay, remote desktop protocol, RDP. Now this one is um, something you have the ability to RDP into a session. So if you work remotely, potentially, um, you might have the ability to RDP into a computer. I don't think I have it installed on here. No, I don't. Okay, so when I do P, it brings that remote desktop protocol. So there's something I could download for this to allow me to remote into a desktop. So if I'm using, for example, if I'm using Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure, I'll have that. It'll give me an IP address. I'll pass a token, um, my authentication, and it'll allow me to connect to that server, and I'll be able to pull up the server on my computer. Um, all right, so the other thing is, um, yeah, so let's talk about, and remote desktop port protocol uses port 3389. Uh, SIP, which is VoIP, voice over internet protocol, uses 5060 and 5061. So that's a telephone hooked up to, the, um, to a server, allows it to call over IP address. Um, database. Uh, and I'm not sure if you guys have taken the database class, but if you've taken the uh, CMPS 160 class, perhaps you have at this point. Um, it uses uh, different protocols as well, um, or different port numbers for each one. So, for example, MySQL, which is something that we use here at the school, um, it uses a port number 3306. It's owned by Oracle. Oracle also owns SQL Net, which uses port number 1521. Um, Microsoft SQL Server. It uses port 1433. It's been using that for years. And lastly is Postgres. That's something that you'll take in CMPS 262 with me. Um, and we're using 5432 as that default port IP port number for those um, addresses. So those are default. Um, so pretty much in a nutshell, that is... I think we're about 29, 30 minutes on this video. So that's the, the lecture for this week. Um, next will be some labs, uh, just kind of walking through some exercises. 
And um, hopefully you have a good week. Thanks for watching, guys.